Hello and welcome back to another changeable day on the Welsh coastline. So I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into some photography today and I'm thinking about capturing some more intimate, detailed patterns, maybe abstract type photography today as opposed to the wider scene. And I'm also going to be taking a look in my camera bag because a lot has changed since 2022. Almost a complete change to be honest and I want to go over the reasons why I changed out a lot of my gear and also why I think it's probably the best Fujifilm setup I've had so far to date. So stick around until the end because there's lots to go through. So when the light is flat and the weather looks uninteresting it's very easy to throw in the towel and stay at home isn't it? But as landscape photographers if we do that we're definitely missing a trick because there's a world of photos around our feet, rock pools, cliff faces on the sand just waiting to be photographed. So that's what I'm looking for today, something really striking, some very interesting patterns, anything could happen and I've just noticed some patterns down here in the sand that I think might make my first shot. So before we get on to that I just want to talk about the vlogging setup that I'm using here before we take a photo then we'll get on to the photography gear a bit later. I like to keep things really simple with my vlogging gear. Don't need anything flash really, but this is perfect for the job. This is the Fuji XS10. It's so lightweight and nimble, it's fantastic. It's got a flippy screen as well, which is perfect for when you're vlogging. You don't even need to use a tripod really, you can just hold it out like that, but I do use a tripod when I'm doing my vlog pieces. On the top of it, I've got the Rode Video Micro, which is another easy plug-in microphone, which gives you great audio, and it also has the wind sock on the top there. And the lens I use is one of the Fuji XC lenses. It's a power zoom. It's 15 to 45 it is. So it's the perfect focal length for vlogging. 15 is wide enough to get shots of yourself when you're walking around. 45 is obviously long enough to get some more detailed shots should you need to pick something out in the landscape. If I do need a shallow depth of field, because I think this is what well, this goes to 3.5 to f5.6, so not particularly shallow depth of field. So if I do need to use a shallow depth of field, I can use one of my photography lenses, you know, but I don't very often do that to be honest. Now and again, I might use a telephoto if I want to pick something out, but for the most part, this is it nice and simple, super quick and easy. Film everything in 4K, 24 frames per second. Absolutely perfect, does the job. So Let's go and take some photos and then we'll get on to the rest of the gear, the photography gear that's in my bag. So this particular area is absolutely wonderful. It reminds me of a woodland scene. We've got this flow of water running through the uh, foreground if you like. Then we've got these patterns in the sand made by the water running through the sand into this flow and that makes it look a little bit like a woodland scene and then beyond that we've got lighter textures of sand, a lot of lighter colours anyway and that looks like the sky so it almost like, looks like a misty woodland and there's lots of different textures and patterns it's wonderful. You can spend hours photographing this type of thing and I'm just shooting it handheld. There's not really any need for a tripod. If I put a tripod down, I'm gonna have my legs in the frame, which is gonna be difficult, which is not ideal. So yeah, hand holding, hundreds of a second, about 25 mil, something like that. So no worries about camera shake. I think light makes a big difference to this scene. If the light's too harsh, we get a lot of light reflecting off the surface of this water. There's almost like a film of water running across the top of it. And that you know, makes the light too harsh. So getting the light right is perfect, I think. And yeah, just taking a few shots, great fun. I would just like to take a moment to thank all of the members over at the Photographers Clubhouse. And for those of you that are new here, let me tell you a little about what the Photographers Clubhouse is all about. 
think of it as a Patreon style platform, but with a whole lot more features for our members. Along with access to my online photography courses, we also have a private members forum where you can connect with other photographers, share your work and get feedback and inspiration from the community. Our members also have access to exclusive landscape photography videos, member photo galleries and so much more. So if you're passionate about photography and want to be a part of a community of like-minded people, be sure to check out the Photographers Clubhouse. Their next 50 people to join will receive a 20% discount on their first two month subscription. It's less than a cost of a beer and all of the contributions go towards the club and running this channel. So be sure to check out the link in the description for more info. Right, sit down here. Dry rock, absolutely fantastic. So let's go into the top pocket first. In the top pocket, we've got this E cloth. This is great, it's quite big, so I could put it right over the top of my gear, keeps it all nice and dry, dry my gear down if I need to. It's always in there, as is my rocket blower, which allows me to blast water off the front of my lens instead of wiping it. I only really tend to wipe it if I really need to. If you can blast the water off, it saves it getting smeared. So I've always got a rocket blower in there. I've got a pretty cheap shutter release cable, which I bought off Amazon. Uh, probably only cost a fiver, dead cheap, works great. Some smaller lens cloths and my battery pack. I've got this little pouch here, which I bought four or five years ago, I think. And uh, that holds all of my batteries. There's four batteries in there. And that, yeah, it's really nice. It fits in the top of my bag quite nicely. And uh, lastly, last item in the top here is my Case Revolution filters. Now, I've talked about these a fair bit on the channel. These are brilliant. These are their new ones, they're color coded. That's a circular polarizer. This one's got a silver rim on it. So you can see which, you know, easily see which is which. So that's the three stop filter with a blue ring and six stop filter with a gold ring. Yeah, so you can see exactly what you've got. You get lens adapters for each of your lenses and this allows you to put these filters on any of your lenses and bring them up to 77 mil so this is a 77 mil filter set i think they do vary in different sizes but for the fuji system that i'm using the 77 works really well and like, like i said different adapter rings for different lenses bringing them all up to this size and they just clip on it's so easy it really is yes so that's the top pocket in the bottom pocket, I've just got some waterproof, so I'm not going to get all this out. Waterproof jacket, a waterproof cover for my bag, and also waterproof trousers. So yeah, they're in the bottom pocket there, which is cool. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can get some textures and details in these rocks, or some lovely colours in these rocks here, and then we'll dive into the main compartment. I've got to keep an eye on this tide as well, because it's rapidly coming in around the rocks there. So we've got to be a bit careful. Anyway, let's get up here. See if we can pick out some details. get to spend as long as I wanted to up there because as you can see <laughs> the tides come right in now it's completely <laughs> cut off that part of the beach so it looks like we're scaling up these rocks to get over the back this cove gets shut off at high tides we're not anywhere near high tide right now but that's okay hopefully we'll be all right yeah we'll be okay we've just got to get up over these rocks here <laughs> And uh, yeah, down the other side. It's fine. It's fine. Fortunately, I know this beach quite well, so it's not a problem. But like I said, I was up there trying to uh, capture some textures and details in the rock faces, but I didn't have enough time. And also, those rocks were so slippy, I nearly went over about three times. 
so at one point I think <laughs> I thought I was going to end up in the sea. So uh, yeah, probably not the best time of year or state of tide to be uh, trying to get something from that particular location. Just have to do a bit of a leap. Oh, there we go. So we're over here now to the safety of the main part of the beach. So that's all good. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know if you can see just behind me there. That's where I would have come round. But that's all worry. All's good. So, new additions to my camera equipment, my photography equipment, is the Fuji X-H2. It's a 40 megapixel sensor, great rugged body, fantastic battery life, brilliant IBIS, and really, really good weather sealing as well. So, absolutely brilliant. Brilliant EVF as well, which is great for, you know, when you're taking handheld shots and you want to see all that wonderful detail. In addition to that, I've got the 16 to 55 f 2.8 lens, which is brand new. And this is a lovely lens. I'm really enjoying using this. It's a little bit weighty for landscape photography, but there are other reasons why I purchased this lens, which we'll cover in just a minute. Uh, just diving back into the bag, I've got my wide angle lens. Now, before I had the 10 to 24 f4 lens, the Fuji lens. Now I've got the Viltrox 30 millimeter f1.4 as my wide angle option. So I'm sacrificing three millimeters on the wide end. However, I'm finding the image quality is much better on the Viltrox lens than that on the 10 to 24 lens on the Fuji X-H2. And I haven't really missed those three millimeters on the wide end, I tend to not shoot too wide when I'm doing seascapes or landscapes. I think sometimes too wide and they look a little bit distorted. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. The only issue I would say is it doesn't have weather sealing, which yeah, is a bit of an issue, but not the end of the world. And a mainstay in my bag, ooh, if we can get it out, is the 50 to 140 f 2.8, another workhorse lens. And you may know that I had a few issues with this lens over the years, but I've had it serviced by Fuji and it's now working in full working order, which is great. Oh, I'm getting soaked here. It's time for me to put my waterproofs on and retreat to a drier spot. So there are a few reasons why I swapped out two of my lenses this year. And that's because I wanted to simplify my kit. I wanted to go for more of a minimal approach to it. So basically I took away the 10 to 24 and brought in the Viltrox 13 millimeter F 1.4 because that covered a lot of different genres of photography. Basically I can shoot Astro with it. I can shoot seascapes, landscapes with it. I could also use it for environmental shots, venue shots, and any low light shots that I need because of the F 1.4 aperture. So I couldn't really use the 10 to 24 at weddings with the F 4 aperture. It wasn't really letting enough light into the sensor. So I think, that is going to be a great addition for you know different types of photography as well. The again with the zoom lenses, the 16 to 55 f 2.8. Obviously, it's got that 2.8 standard aperture all the way through the focal range, which is great. That allows me to be able to throw my background to get nice portrait shots if needed. Get that lovely bokeh in the background. I can also get in a lot of light if I'm shooting indoors too, which is great for that. So that lens can be used for a whole multitude of different purposes, which again is another reason for me having it in my bag. And having one kit that serves all of my photography is helping to keep things nice and simple. So yes, it was a bit of an investment, but it's going to make my life a lot easier. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? So the light's looking really nice now, and I'm wondering if maybe I can capture a shot looking down the beach. So let's go and see if we can find something. So I moved back up the coast just a bit to photograph these markers here, which protect local fishing boats from the boulders that stretch out down the sea and protect the coast from erosion. And I've often thought they would make a very, very graphic 
long exposure image, especially when there's moody clouds in the sky. That's exactly what we've got this evening. So that's what I'm going for. I'm going for a 15 second exposure with a 10 stop filter on, F8. And that's smoothing that water out, but it's not smoothing the clouds out as well. So I'm retaining the texture and detail in the clouds. If you, if you go for a super long exposure, then the sky will just turn to one big expanse of grey as well. I don't want that, I want to see that texture in the clouds. So very graphic, minimalist composition, square crop. I think it works well. I think it's a good one to finish off the day. If you're interested in how I customise my camera, all the different function buttons, be sure to check out the video that's over here. And if you like this content, please consider liking it, sharing it if you think others might like it too, and subscribe for more content because I'm out every week shooting landscapes. Until next week guys, take care, I'll see you soon.